Where's that hecking on button? Ooh, I found it! Let's play! Good evening everybody, Loke here for the A to Z of Internet Gaming, a new series we will be doing over the next several weeks, and as you should always start with the alphabet, we will be starting with A for Alter Ego. Yes, Alter Ego was a game released in 1986, which was then ported over to the uh, web browser uh, format essentially from the Commodore 64, if I'm remembering correctly. I may not be remembering correctly, Editing Loke will probably sort that out. But yes, um, I find this an interesting one as it's, it's essentially the game of life and it's a drastically different game depending on if you're male or female. Now I'll be showing off the, uh, the male version, um, at a later date I may show off the female version if I do find it to be significantly different, but we'll be starting off with the male version of Alter Ego with Loki. Alter Ego is the personality development profile. Use the arrow keys to move the pointer next to a response. Press space to select that response. So yes, it's essentially like a, um, a branching narrative, uh, a choose your own adventure sort of thing. I used to love those sort of, sort of books, so this game is perfect. Uh, so yes, uh, let me select my own personality, let computer select my personality, let computer select it, then let me examine or edit it. Uh, you know what, I'm going to select my own personality, thank you. I will probably try to answer these questions honestly. True. I am likely to speak whatever comes to mind. Well, as you know when I do these uh, game review things, yes. Uh, I am a light sleeper who stirs at even the lightest sound. No. <laughs> revenge is sweet. Hmm. See, revenge is a dish best served cold, and a lot of the best desserts are cold, and a lot of desserts are sweet. So by going by that logic, uh, like desserts that are served cold are sweet and because revenge is a dish best served cold revenge must be sweet so we gotta logic that one out there we are uh i often feel slow tired and down in the dumps um when i'm recording these videos no otherwise yes <laughs> yeah i i do get very very tired when i'm not um not playing video games and I don't know why uh, I seem to be energized by these things so an important part of every job is knowing whom to impress that is indeed true I am fascinated by car accidents and other disaster scenes no they are horrifying the people who know me best like me as a person I mean I I hope they do I, I hope I'm extremely sensitive to criticism um I'd say this folks I do enjoy criticism Ugh. Criticism words. Um, yeah, if you ever have any criticism about the videos we do, please do say in the comments below because we always strive to work on that. I get nervous performing in front of people, even when the task is something I know by heart. That is true. <laughs> I do get nervous. The people around me seem happier than I do. I often get the urge to touch walls on which wet paint signs are hung. I need to touch the paint to make sure that it is wet. <laughs> With you, when I am ill, I become short-tempered and snap at people. That is true. This bateau does not like being ill. On important matters, I usually follow my parents' advice, even when I disagree with it. Uh, probably. <laughs> it's possible that we live in a world where people can watch our every move. That is so true. When I'm in the quiet place, in the quiet place, when I'm in a quiet place, I get the urge to scream. <laughs> ah! Ah, okay. <laughs> it's okay to tell a white lie if it's guaranteed to bring great personal gain. Nope. It is often pointless to try to discuss problems with other people. False. I'm easily embarrassed. True. <laughs> Children should be seen and not heard. That is false. Children are human beings too. There we are. Well, this is definitely getting into depth. You're learning a lot about me. <laughs> Learning a lot about Loke. Uh, review. I find it difficult to break the ice in conversations with people I barely know. That is true. My parents were strict disciplinarians. Uh, I mean, most parents are quite strict, so yeah, I'll go by that. You can usually judge a person by first impressions. I mean, first impressions are usually false, so I'll, I'll go false for that. One way of getting people to treat you fairly is to take an aggressive stance and make them win you over. Um, I don't like being aggressive with people, so no. Uh, I think the questions like this are stupid and meaningless. No, it's, it's, it's interesting. I very do much enjoy this. It, it's definitely showing off. Not only my own inner psyche, which is ah, a scary place, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting thing. So yes, that is the start sort of bit of Alter Ego. Let's begin the game. 
please select the stage of life at which you would like to begin the game. Um, I mean birth and infancy, you start life at birth, so you might as well stop the game at birth. Welcome to birth and infancy. Every man is the architect of his own fortune. Sallust, Gaius Celestius Crispus, 86 to 34 BC, speech to Caesar on the state, sec one. And yes, it is Caesar, otherwise degenerates, degenerates that say Caesar deserved to be on a cross. <sighs> it's not Fallout. It's not Fallout. It's alter ego. Look, come on. Press space to continue. Okay. You are in a warm, dark, comfortable place. This has been your place since you became aware that you are alive. It's almost time to enter a different world now. So, stay in a little longer, come out fighting, come out peacefully. Ah, uh, come out peacefully. Oh yeah, come out peacefully. What's a good sport? Are you sure you're ready for this? It can get pretty hectic out there. I'll give you one more chance to try to stay a while longer. Would you like to? Uh, I'm good. That's the spirit. You're in easy delivery. Your mum and dad took special classes to help you. Go out there and give them a heck. You're still too young to swear. Heck is a great word. Happy birthday and welcome to the world. From now on, life will begin to change rapidly. You have to learn to accept responsibility, build up your resources and manage yourself physically and emotionally. The events that transpire over the course of the next few days include your rich aunt Martha places a 500 pound dollar that's dollar, dollar bond in trust for you. You are the most beautiful baby in the maternity ward, and everyone takes your picture. Your father buys you a baseball bat and glove for you to use in a year or so when you get older. Okay, we've got a few things going on now. So, we've got uh, things. Things. Many, many things. What's this? A woman walks into a room holding a blanket and a bottle with warm white liquid. Select a mood. Angry or happy? I'm happy. I'm gonna coo. Nothing like a nice warm bottle and a quick hug from mum to get a kid ready to face the world. As she walks toward you with the bottle, she sees you smiling and interprets this as a sign that you want to play with her. She picks you up and holds you for 10 minutes. This presents you with quite a dilemma. Cry or keep making noises? Keep making noises. Having to delay being fed is uncomfortable, but you are beginning to learn how important human contact is for survival. Your overall stress level increases, but socially you score a big plus. Okay, so yeah, I believe it's got a little background thing going on, and there's a sort of timer in the top right, so we're going to keep wiggling. You don't have very many skills yet. As a matter of fact, life is pretty boring. Uh, uh, select a mood. I'm quiet, and I shall look around. You look around and see a large blur about 11 inches away from your eye. That, that's just me without wearing my glasses. Battle is blind. Every once in a while, it moves. Hey, wait a minute. Just as you had that thought, it moved again. I'm going to keep looking. Congratulations! You found your hand! <laughs> yeah, that's so true. I can't see my hand before my face. This may not seem like much of a big discovery, but it is. You will have to learn how to control your hands as part of childhood development. When you are an adolescent, those hands are going to get you into quite a bit of trouble. Because <laughs> that requires a different kind of hand control. Okay. The mind. Lying on your stomach in your crib, you notice an interesting object an arm's distance away. It has a round shape at the top and a ring on the bottom. Uh, we're going to do it with determination, and we're going to grasp for the object. You have the fighting spirit of your Uncle Bill. You, you a lot of words. You sneak and crawl on your belly like a combat soldier heading into battle. You reach your destination, grasp the rattle confidently, and drool on it in victory. Intellectual sphere shows a marked increase. <laughs> As you shall shake the rattle, or emit a pleasurable yell. Yell! This stimulates vocal cords and language centers in your brain. Good language skills are essential to development. Intellectual sphere increases. If no one is looking, give a little yell yourself for choosing this option. Go on, did you do it? Ah! Yes, yes I did. Uh, select an action, yes. Good, I just gave you some extra social points for being a good sport. Why thank you? I very much like the style of this game. You are lying on the floor of a big room on a soft furry blanket. Oh, so soft. You are on your back, staring at shadows that sometimes creep across the ceiling. Every so often, mum or dad passes by and makes a funny face. Your hands grope in all directions and your feet pat the floor gently, almost out of your control. I'm gonna be happy and I'm gonna make an O shape with my mouth. Sure. You pucker your cheeks in and out and take short, quick breaths. The skin on your face feels alter no, alternatively tight and loose. A person walks by and twirls their fingers at you. Why? Uh, turn towards the person? You are too young to keep the person in view for a long time. Whoever it is, he moves past in a blur. Shame. 
family? You are lying down in your crib and are greeted by a noisy neighbour who has a child... Oh, noisy? Nosy, sorry, I can't even read. Uh, who has a child just around your age. The neighbour says, My, look at that funny little nose. She turns to your mother and adds, Don't worry, dear. I hear that nose is the last thing to look truly human. She picks you up. Uh, I'm going to be vengeful. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going to vengefully fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. You have made an inappropriate response. Ah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be angry and vengeful and I'm going to collect a mouth of drool. A nice puddle of saliva has formed on the inside of your mouth. Open your mouth and drool on the neighbour. <laughs> there we are. Splash! A gooey stream showers your neighbour's face and hands while you give her a glassy-eyed smile. She places you back in the crib and excuses herself. <laughs> oh, I wanted to vengefully fall asleep. You are lying down in your crib again while your mum and dad are speaking in the other room. You hear their voices, deep and muffled, from beyond the door. Why aren't they paying attention to you? I'm, I'm going to be happy. I'm, sh I'm sure they're happy. I'm going to have a happy sleep. It's very considerate of you to leave your parents with some time alone together. It does seem like a perfect opportunity to attract some attention, however. You have a comfortable nap and wake up feeling hungry. Uh, I'm going to make noises. You make a variety of noises using your mouth, lips and saliva. You make them over and over and over again. La 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 mgla. Suddenly your mum comes in. Uh, be quiet and attentive. Your mum lifts you up and gives you, you your feeding. Her comforting satisfies you emotionally. I'm gonna stay quiet. You have missed a good opportunity to develop skill, uh, speech and language skills. Some language experts believe language skills develop when parents begin to reward random sounds by giving attention. Others believe that language skills are the products of the development of inborn structures. You do not suffer terribly as a result of your choice to be quiet. You will find out later that keeping your mouth shut can be much better than talking too much. So yeah, this game was developed by a psychologist. So these sort of like little text dump things are actually relevant. They're, they're actually present and correct for at least the era that this game was developed, 1986. I'm sure that some of it is still applicable now, so it does have to be taken with a pinch of salt. Not all of it will be relevant, but I thought I find that interesting that this game was developed by a psychologist. So we're going to go to the heart. You have just awakened from a nice long nap. Your mum comes in the room and wants to hold you. Select a mood. I'm going to be happy. And I'm going to smile. Happy smile. This is a great way to make a new mum feel good. Your consideration earns you points in many spheres. You will find that as life progresses, pleasing mother becomes harder and harder. In a few years, it will take doing chores and going to the store. Before you know it, she'll want you to become a doctor or a lawyer. Enjoy your infancy while you can. Your mum picks you up so that your face touches hers. And I'm gonna be... No, uh, I'm gonna move my mouth. Do things. You just gave your first kiss. This may not seem like a very big deal to you, but it is very important for your mother. The bad part is that now you have to repeat this act until your entire family becomes aware of your new talent. You can avoid kissing overly affectionate relatives by dribbling on them at just the right moment. Okay, looks like we are advancing. Oh, it's time to go to Aunt Lucy's house. It's chilly outside and you need to be dressed in a coverall type suit. I'm going to be playful. I'm in a suit. I'm going to playfully cooperate. What a good baby. Your mother has very little trouble getting you into your suit. Your grandmother holds you while your mum gets dressed. I'm going to give a great big smile. I'm going to be a good baby. You are behaving yourself very nicely today. This is one of those experiences that your grandma will always remember. You have just become one of her favourite grandchildren and will be rewarded handsomely later in life. This can help you if you get yourself into a jam, which you undoubtedly will. So yes, decisions that you make on an earlier basis will have an impact at a later date. You are quietly playing with your father's brand new electronic calculator. Look, the back of it lifts off very easily. Don't eat it. Um, I'm going to be inquisitive, but I'm going to look, but don't touch. <laughs> your self-control is quite remarkable. Look at all of those tiny little plugs and circuits. They pop out very easily. Want to go back and try again? No. Such a good boy. You have plenty of time to fiddle around with things as you get older. Yeah, I don't want to accidentally kill myself by like eating a battery or something. You're exploring the play plan, the play plan, and are feeling very lively. Like a prize fighter, you grab hold of the playpen bars and shake back and forth, flexing your knees. I'm going to be determined, and I'm going to take some steps. You are showing early signs of confidence, mixed with just the right amount of risk-taking. 
Success comes easily and naturally as you take a leisurely, but wobbly, stroll to the other side of the crib. Which way to the Olympics? And I can't go over there, so we'll go upwards. Oh, there's lots of things. Mum and Dad are entertaining some friends, and you are minding your own business sitting quietly in a corner of the room. Suddenly, a man with a big nose and a shiny head puts his face right up to yours and says something in a loud voice. Select a mood. I'm, uh, that, that would be terrifying. And I, I, I'm going to do nothing. Okay. I, I'm still going to be terrorised, but I'm going to hit the man. Just, no. Bam! You give him a right to the stars. <laughs> Which feels rough and oily. You are terrified and he thinks you are playing with him. Fortunately, your dad spots him and ushers him back to other people closer to his age. You are sitting in your high chair, eating your lunch, which consists of crackers, strained peas, and a mug of milk. You are just learning how to eat with utensils. I'm going to be curious. And I'm going to... Ooh, super duck! Super duck! First, you put the back end of the spoon in your mouth. You then lift the cup with both hands and try blowing through the spoon as if it were a straw. Nothing happens. Uh, I'm going to keep playing with the spoon and the cup. Curiosity and persistence are early signs of an inventive personality. One day, during late childhood, you may find yourself attempting to rewire the electronic hairdryer and have a shocking experience. For now, you stir the milk rapidly with the spoon or place the spoon inside the cup and tip the high chair tray for Oh no, I'm going to be good. I'm going to stir the milk rapidly. It makes bubbles! Bubbles! Bubbles, my bubbles! It bounces out of the cup and hits you in the face. It causes the cup to fly off the tray and spill all over the floor. This is great. Your mother fails to understand the true significance of your discovery, but acts surprisingly tolerant. While being taken to the park, your dad meets an old college buddy. He is wheeling a baby about your age. As the two dads talk, you casually begin to eye the other baby in the other carriage. I'm going to be curious. And I'm going to... I'm not going to put my finger near them. I'm going to... I'm going to be indifferent and do nothing. I don't want to risk it. Snob, you are able to get away with these terrible manners now, but soon you will find that one must learn how to socialise properly. I don't want to... I want to be friendlier. It doesn't work. Jeez, this kid is a crybaby. You are learning that sometimes, no matter how nice you are to some people, they just don't appreciate it. Your dad moves you away from the other baby and gives you a cookie to keep you occupied. Cookies! At least he appreciates your empathy. Cookies, cookies, my cookies, not Brock's cookies, my cookies. Up until this point in life, Weasley Wabbit, your stuffed toy, has been one of your best friends. You take him everywhere with you, but he's beginning to get on in years. One of his ears is torn off, and a recent eye injury has made his face look a little lopsided. It is suggested that Weasley should be, re should be retired. You wake up one day to discover Weasley has been moved from the place where you last spotted him. No! What's... Where, where's Weasley? I'm going to suspiciously seek information. You confront Mum with the fact that Weasley was not in the spot where he was last deposited. She claims not to have seen him there. You are... Not satisfied with this answer. Where is Weasley? Did you kill him? Wisely you persist. This time she tells you that Weasley left because he wanted to be with friends who are more like him. She tells you that next week you will have a new visitor. A brand new friend who will be just as nice as Weasley. You are... I'm not satisfied. Bravo! Don't fall for that line of bull. Parents are great at fabricating stories like this when they make mistakes. You will not get your Weasley Rabbit back, but your intelligence and perseverance in this situation make it harder for your parents to tell you made-up stories to cover their mistakes. You are alone in the kitchen and begin exploring the closets and refrigerator. I'm going to be curious but cautious, and I'm going to move towards the fridge. You have a grand time examining and smelling many of the items in the kitchen. You are young, but have obviously learnt that many things can hurt you if you put them in your mouth. You should know that some of the other choices could have led to your early death as a result of accidental poisoning. Yeah, this game can be brutal if you make one wrong decision. Your judgement is superb and will help you in later life. You are touching something smooth and shiny. You pat it with your hand a few times. I'm going to be passive, and I'm going to keep touching the thing. Your explorations are only half-hearted. You fail to make the, dis the discovery that you are touching a mirror, and that there is a reflection of yourself there. Aw, shame. It is announced to you during a heart-to-heart -heart talk that it is time for you to give up the bottle and drink from a glass, like a big boy. I'm going to be disappointed, but willing to try. And I'm going to give give the bottle up. I, I don't need it. I don't need it. Mum understands how difficult it is to let go of an old friend, and appreciates your effort. She has a box for you. I'm gonna 
Open the box. Oh boy, a plastic super dark drinking cup with bendable straw. Look at this, it even has your name on it. Oh, it's got Loki on it. <laughs> Mum tells you super dark wrote it there himself. Mum is laying it on a bit thick at that moment. <laughs> Go around the house, there we are. You're a guest at your friend Billy's house. His mum gives you both a box of crayons and two pieces of paper. I'm going to be artistic and I'm going to draw on the paper. You are behaving yourself very nicely so far. You draw a pretty picture. I'm going to give it to you, mom. I'm going to give it to mom. Mom. It's mum, but mom. A very nice gesture. You can have a good time at somebody else's house for a short while, but there's no place like home. Ah. You are sitting in a large place and a furry man walks up to you. He's walking around you in circles. Uh, I'm going to be frightened and I'm, I'm going to point. <laughs> Oh! The furry man walks right up to you and smells you up and down. His nose pokes into your face and neck. It's cold. <gasps> Is it a dog? Is it a dog? Um, um, grab the furry man. You grab his head between your two hands. Hey, now that man is licking you all over the face. Mummy says he is kissing you. Uh, that, sure. His nose is cold and the hairs tickle your face. He tastes very salty and has bad breath. Ew. Ew, just licked a dog. Ew. No, gross. Ew. We'll do a few more bits and pieces, and then we'll probably leave it there. This game is, is actually just like going down a rabbit hole of decisions. It's like, oh, oh, a thing. Oh, this is interesting text. I very much enjoy it. <laughs> you are in a large department store, waiting in line, and there's an extremely well-endowed woman standing in front of you. She smiles. It looks like she may be an interesting person to talk to. I'm going to be inquisitive, and I'm going to ask her some questions. Which question would you like to ask? Second action. Do you have a husband? Do you have a doggy? Uh, Mummy said that Daddy has a thick skull. <laughs> do you? I tried very hard to pinch a penny, like Aunt Edna, but couldn't, can you? Stop asking questions. Do you have a doggy? She tells you no, no doggy, only a cat. You inform her that Daddy said that that's why they cook in the restaurant on the corner. <laughs> that's what they cook. Oh god. Perhaps you are interested in asking something else. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to be a pain, I'm going to stop asking questions. You have caused your mother enough embarrassment for one day. You are alone in your parents' bedroom. There's a shiny silver quarter on the table. I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to leave it alone. This might have been a tough decision for you. At your age, and even sometimes in adulthood, honesty is often less than clear-cut. You might have figured that you had nothing to gain by stealing the quarter. You were right about that. You've gained the trusty mer- You've, ga blah, blah, blah. You've gained in the trustworthiness category. So, do I actually have stats that go, like, because I can't, I can't find any sort of like stats sort of thing. Daddy says it's time to go to bed. I'm going to be tired because I'm always tired when I'm not recording, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say I don't. Wait, I'm tired. I'm going to say tired, but ask to stay up a bit longer. That explains how tired you are and what a busy day it will be tomorrow. Same old line. He offers to carry you when you get to the bedroom. You can ask him to tell you a story or ask for a drink of water. Ask for a story. It'd be nice. Dad tells you the story of the three bears. You have heard it a million times before, but when he tells it, it is always special. You fall asleep, holding on to Dad's big finger. It's Saturday morning, and Dad asks you to help with some chores. The Super Duck Cartoon Hour has just begun. I'm going to be cranky, but I'm going to go outside and help if I can. You go outside reluctantly and mope around. You move around a lot and touch things that you shouldn't. Dad gets impatient trying to watch you and do work at the same time, so he sends you back in the house. But yeah, like, this this is Alter Ego. Um, there's many things you can do. Like, lots. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised at how much depth this game has. This is just the childhood, like, little infancy bit of the game. And we've gotten about maybe two-thirds of the way through that. It, it's so good. I like branching narratives. I very much enjoy them. But yes, um, this was the A of the A to Z of internet gaming. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sadly, it does come to that shill 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 bit of the video. If you did enjoy this video on Alter Ego, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If not, that's perfectly fine as well. Those sorts of things can be left behind, much like that shiny quarter was. Because yes, we are honest little batters. We do not take things that are not ours. But yes, thanks once again for watching our videos. I hope you have a wonderful evening and good night.